everybody, it's Dr. Sandy Laura Kramers. Thank you for joining us for the EYE Show podcast. I'm one of the board certified surgeons here at Visionary Eye Doctors. Today we're gonna to talk about a frequent question I get on contact lenses as well as scleral lenses. And so many of us out there have used contact lenses for years or are considering to start contact lenses for various reasons. So this morning I got that same question. Dr. Kramers, what do you think about scleral lenses for my dry eye disease? Or what do you think about just wearing contact lenses in general? So there are basically two different questions. Number one is should I or should I not wear contact lenses and what are the risks? And the second question is should I consider scleral lenses if I'm having a lot of dry eye symptoms? So let's attack the first one first because that is something that I know for myself, I've been in contact lenses for over 30 years now. Is that right? 20 years. <laughs> so anyway, something like that. And I know that my eyes are getting drier with aging. And you'll notice sometimes on videos, you'll see how I blink or look away or even have sometimes twitching on my eyelids because I'm starting to get drier. And so I know that I can't wear my contact lenses as much as I used to. And I only use the contact lenses for contact lens worthy events. So I tell patients, use your contact lenses for contact lens worthy events. And that's really for your whole life. Now, let's say you're a very high myope or a high hyperope where you just can't can't see with your glasses because the glasses are so thick. I totally feel what, what you're going through and I totally understand. I definitely prefer to use my contact lenses over my glasses. But again, the same issue, you kind of have to balance the risks. And what the risks of contact lenses really are is that micro uh, kind of uh, the eye is the contact lens is covering the cornea. And the conjunctiva, here's an example of an eyeball, the cornea, the conjunctiva, the contact lens is touching the cornea and the conjunctiva. And so years of that micro abrasion, micro friction, micro inflammation is leading to general inflammation that leads to cell damage of the meibomian gland, the goblet cells, and we don't have proof of lacrimal gland damage, but general surface inflammation is surface inflammation and it leads to inflammation of the whole tear pathway. And so that can mean discomfort of dry eyes in the future or just, just the inability to tolerate anything like a contact lens in your eye. So less is better. So definitely don't never sleep in your contact lenses. Uh, even if you have the kind of, if you're a child and they're putting the contact lens for vision refractive concerns, you use it for that reason. Of course, you can sleep in it at that time, but the longer you use that type of material on the surface of the eye, it's basically going to cause issues in the future. And it could be 30 years down the line. It could be 10 years down the line. So it just depends a little bit on what your meibomian gland health looks like. Okay, so contact lenses, I love them. I've used them. I re recommend them for patients, but you got to think about contact lens safety. So that means try to never sleep in them, never put them in your mouth, which I had a friend that used to do that all the time with her hard contact lenses. Uh, definitely think about making sure that if you have ever have any, any pain, redness, discharge, vision issues, you go see your ophthalmologist right away. We have patients every single week that come in and say, oh, I felt like there was something in my eye for a couple of days, but they're a contact lens wearer. And then sure enough, they have a small little ulcer and they have to start drops every hour on the hour, sometimes every half hour on the half hour, 24 hours a day. And they're at risk for losing vision or needing a corneal transplant. So contact lenses are no joke, especially if you have an autoimmune disease or diabetes. Okay, so that's question number one. Uh, that's true for cosmetic contact lenses as well, colored contact lenses, uh, Halloween contact lenses, just be very careful with them. The second question is harder. It's a scleral lens question. So scleral lenses vault the cornea. They're more rigid and they're usually bigger and they actually don't touch the cornea. They vault it to kind of protect the cornea and they will touch the conjunctiva, the clear covering of the white part of the eye. And scleral lenses are used often for patients that have some type of corneal disease like keratoconus or some other corneal issue, a dystrophy. It will be used in end stage dry eye disease or in patients that really have terrible neuropathy of their cornea. The cornea is the nerves are malfunctioning and they have constant pain or lid wiper epitheliopathy where there's some scar tissue under the upper eyelid and as you blink it can feel like sandpaper on the very sensitive nerve fiber of the cornea sorry about that um so <laughs> anyway uh, a call from a dear friend um so but basically the scleral lenses are trying to kind of help protect that corneal tissue from having constant abrasion. It also has negatives, which is that touch of the conjunctiva 
And of course, the scleral lens is touching the inner surface of the eyelid, and that causes microinflammation as well, which can lead to long-term uh, scar tissue and fibrosis of very sensitive cells. So I tell patients, if you cannot live without your scleral lenses, first of all, you can give it a try, okay, and see if you can tolerate it. But that trial is very expensive because most insurances don't cover scleral lenses, and they can be between $2,000 to $5,000, and so it's a quite an expensive experiment. So I tell patients, first, and foremost, you need to know what your meibomian glands look like. So if you have glands that are almost gone, then the chance of tolerating the scleral lenses is so low that you, I don't think it's worth the risk to even try them. Or, or you could trial them, but don't pay for them until you're sure you can tolerate having something in your eye because it might feel just like a rock is in your eye. But if you have a lot of oil glands, if you look like these white lines are filled with oil and you have a lot of oil, then it's worth a try. And so what you're trying to decide is, number one, is it going to help the symptoms? And number two, what's your long-term risk? And a lot of it has to do with the amount of oil you have and the amount of water or aqueous. Those two are the big factors. And so we have many patients that cannot live without their scleral lenses. We tell them, yes, use them as needed. They need it to survive and to work, but take it out as soon as you can. Take it out. Try not to you know, be in them 12 hours a day. Try to minimize the amount of scleral lens use you have because long term you're going to hit a point where you can't use them anymore and currently I have zero patients that can tolerate scleral lenses in their 70s I mean I'm sure there's maybe one but I have not seen that yet or maybe just maybe for like an hour or two it's very rare to see somebody in their older age tolerate scleral lenses same thing in the 60s very rare I have a handful of patients in their 60s that use scleral lenses. So you're buying yourself time to just be able to work and function until we can find hopefully something better. And I think right now we do have something better. And I have not had to really recommend scleral lenses because we generally find something on that step ladder sheet that you've seen uh, with all those tools in the world that we have that works so we don't have to use scleral lenses. So I do use it as an end kind of tool. So most people won't use it until they've failed all the other things you've heard me talk about, the warm compresses, the blinking, all the natural things, the xenogoggle glasses, the humidifier, HEPA filter, uh, general anti-inflammatory diet, uh, zydrostasis, sequa, prescription drops, punctal plugs, doxy, IPL, uh, lipoflow tear care, probing, PRP, amniotic membrane, uh, cord blood serum, steroids, stem cells, all those things. A cord blood serum has been a game changer. Those things really do help. And it's rare we have to put a patient into scleral lenses, but it does happen, And it's but it is rare. So my hope is that you get help from this video and understand that scleral lenses are helpful uh, for a lot of patients, but we don't want to use it until we really have to because it's not going to be a long-term or a lifetime solution for most patients. The last thing I want to mention is scleral lenses. Sometimes patients will put their either drops in there or their PRP in the contact lens and then in the scleral lens and then put it on the eye. And that does really kind of heal the surface of the eye if it's played the rich plasma, for instance. But we don't want patients to do that too often because we don't want to create a petri dish because that scleral lens literally will be on the eye. And if there's a fluid in there, especially if it's your own platelets or blood, it could create an infection. And I haven't seen that happen in anyone just yet. It's been reported, I think, in my knowledge, on one patient with autologous serum, uh, but not with platelet-rich plasma. But just be careful if you're using your scleral lens as a reservoir to put your drops in and you put it on the eye. You can do that, but I wouldn't put it on the whole day because it could theoretically create an infection if it becomes like a breeding ground for bacteria if the reservoir got contaminated with the bacteria. So just be aware of that. And of course, with all contact lenses, practice hygiene where you always wash your hands before you take it in and out. You always use a kind of clean environment. Uh, don't Obviously, if you drop it on the ground, we would want to kind of uh, sanitize it a little bit with the solution and maybe ideally throw it out if it's a contact lens, if it's a daily, uh, kind of focused daily contact lens, and the scleral lens, be very careful that you don't get an infection. Any issues ever with contact lenses when you talk to the either triage nurse at the doctor's office or emergency room or whatever you have, you tell them that you're a contact lens wearer. That's super important because they're going to want to see you right away. We do never take those patients uh, lightly because they can surprise us and have very bad infections because your contact lens, after having used it for years and years, your core becomes less sensitive to pain. And so that's why infections can take over so quickly in a contact lens patient because they may not notice anything until the infection has really almost started to burrow into the eyeball itself. And that's super dangerous. So that's the key 
you know, question with contact lenses. So for the patients that have asked me about scleral lenses, thank you for that question. Thank you for subscribing to our podcast. Please pass this on and have a great day.